Hello. Welcome to lesson one on electrochemical cells. Just, just before we get to the cell itself, a little bit of a review. What happens if I take a piece of zinc and I drop it into some copper sulfate solution? So, uh, good old GCSE practical, maybe uh, year nine, time that we get introduced. What happens? But well, of course, the zinc reacts because zinc is more reactive than copper, we would have said in GCSE days. Um, so the zinc reacts with the copper sulfate and makes zinc sulfate and copper. Uh, in terms of the observations, you'd see the zinc slowly corrode away as it gets, as it reacts with the, the copper sulfate solution. And we'd start to see little bits of copper building up either on the surface of the zinc or falling off and then lying on the bottom of the thing. You'd see some bits of copper down here and our zinc would sort of slowly get eaten away. There we go. Okay. So that would be a, again, a GCSE reaction. A better reaction equation would be an ionic equation Let's throw in some state symbols as well. So the copper two plus ions in solution are becoming copper solid and the zinc solid is becoming zinc two plus ions. Even better than that would be a, a redox approach. So we could um, break that down into reduction and oxidation half equations. So uh, copper two plus is going to copper zero, so that's being reduced. If the oxidation state goes down, it's being reduced. Sorry, if the oxidation state is reduced, it's being reduced. That's the easier way to remember it. And the zinc is losing electrons. Zinc, two plus ions, two electrons. So remember, uh, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons, of course. Um, so what we can see here is we've got two processes, both involving electrons. Um, and in this case, the electrons are being given uh, straight from the zinc to the copper ions that would happen on the surface of the metal. But what if we separate those two, uh, those two half equations and put them into separate beakers? So that's what's going on here. Just get my solutions. Okay, so I've got a solution of zinc sulfate here. So zinc sulfate obviously contains zinc ions. That's going to go in there. And then I've got some copper sulfate, nice blue solution. And that contains the all important copper ions. Okay, so we've got, got that and I've got a multimeter here. Um, I can work out how this goes. Something goes into com. Uh, I don't know. Something goes into volts. How about that? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, so I put the copper in with the copper sulfate, and I put the zinc in with the zinc sulfate. So we're we're separating the zinc and the copper sulfate reaction by putting them in separate uh, separate beakers. I've got a a link to a voltmeter here and then back. But what I don't have is a completed circuit. We have to put something in the middle. And the solution we usually use is a bit of, a bit of torn up filter paper made into a kind of a shape like that. And if I dunk one end in the copper sulfate like that and the other end in the zinc sulfate like that and then sort of fold it over so that, maybe just a bit more copper sulfate, the solution is touching the bottom of the filter paper on both sides. So a little bit more on this side too. Uh, when the two solutions just rise up the filter paper there and they're just starting to touch, and I'm, I'm just going to come around here because it's 
the angle has to be just right. Oh, can't see it. What have we got? 1.02 volts there. Okay. Now going down to 1.1, we'll just bring that in a bit. Yeah, just just about a volt, that's just dropped to 0.99, interestingly. It goes goes down immediately. Talk about why it goes down, but we definitely have a voltage. Or as physicists would remind me, potential difference. Now let's take away all of that, just leave our redox half equations, because they're still correct. And just draw what we have here. So we've got a solution of zinc sulfate containing zinc 2 plus ions and a solution of copper sulfate containing copper 2 plus ions. Then we've got a piece of zinc and a piece of copper sitting in the solution. And lastly, we have this bit of filter paper here jumping between the, the two there. The, the term for that bit of filter paper um, is depends, a salt bridge. And if all was well, and I had a uh, uh, one mole per dm cubed solution over there and a one mole per dm cubed solution over here, and everything was perfect and there was no resistance in the wires and blah 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 we should get 1.1 volts so it was about 1.02 when i first connected it up and then it does start to drop what's it is it reading now oh, 1.02 okay so that's that that's that's pretty good um and the reason for that is because the zinc is giving away electrons so here's our piece of zinc here and we imagine the little zinc atoms in there uh, quite happy to give away their electrons because zinc's pretty reactive metal. So the electrons get given away and zinc then drops into solution, becomes zinc 2 plus ions each time the zinc loses the electrons. And they go around the wire, past the voltmeter, and uh, the voltmeter re registers that potential difference between the zinc and the copper. And then eventually gets the, the copper solution here and those electrons would then drop down into the piece of copper there and the copper metal will pick those up and I don't know if you can hear that, it sounds like there's a Chinook about to land on the science building. Um, uh, so the copper ions will pick up those electrons and become copper metal so what we expect to see over time is that the copper uh, electrode there would build up some copper and the zinc would slowly get eaten away, exactly the same as the, the, the displacement reaction that we mentioned earlier. Okay. Obviously we could do this with other metals as well. Um, so what have we got here? We've got zinc and copper so when we have the zinc copper electrode together we get 1.1 volts uh, i've got some other data here uh, magnesium and zinc together gives 1.62 volts um zinc and copper copper and silver together would give 0.46 volts and lead and silver 0.93 volts and so on. So the question I'd usually ask year um, tens, I think ten separates do some work on electrode potential cells. What is it that um, determines the the size of the voltage here? Well, um, it is of course the distance apart in the reactivity series. So if we remember our reactivity series, we have the very reactive metals at the top like potassium and sodium and calcium and then we get to uh, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, 
um, tin, lead, and then finally down to copper and silver and gold and so on. So two metals that are um, far apart in the series, like zinc and copper, give you a fairly reasonable voltage. Uh, metals that are much closer together, like copper and silver, give you a much smaller voltage. That's a very GCSE kind of argument. Um, and it is good enough for GCSE, but it doesn't tell you where the actual numbers come from. I mean, why 1.10 volts? Why not a bit more? Why not a bit less? Why is it always exactly the same? Um, well, we've got the zinc and the copper both kind of contributing to the overall voltage. If you think of voltage as a measure of the energy of the electrons in the circuit, the energy of that reaction comes from the, the reactivity of the zinc and the copper sulfate. In the same way, if I put some zinc and some copper sulfate and leave it for a bit, just in one beaker, the temperature goes up. The temperature goes up because it's releasing energy. Now, this is releasing energy as well, but it's releasing energy in the form of electrical energy. It's giving the electrons the energy to move around the circuit. But, but who out of zinc and copper contributes the most to that? Is it all on zinc and copper's hardly doing any of the heavy lifting or is copper doing the work and zinc just kind of contributes its electrons without adding any energy? How much of the potential difference comes from zinc? So what, what we need really is, is to measure just, to say, just the copper bit. Okay, well, of course I can't do that because as soon as I take away the zinc bit, there's no, there's no reaction. So I can't, I can't get a measure of copper on its own. And just, just the same way if, you know, if I, if I thought of these as variables, if zinc plus copper is 1.1 and magnesium plus zinc is 1.62, I try to solve those like simultaneous equations. I, I always have as many variables as I do solutions. I can never actually get to an end that question. So in order to, um, in order to get ourselves a, a, a manageable way of approaching this topic, so rather than having to remember the voltages of lots and lots of different pairs of cells, and of course there's about 80 metals in the periodic table, so how many, how many different pairs is that? It's like the handshake problem, isn't that in maths? It's, it's going to be hundreds, thousands. Um, we need a way of saying copper contributes this much. And the way around that is to introduce uh, a thing called the standard hydrogen electrode, which we'll do next time.